Welcome everyone. I hope you're having a good night and hope you're um, staying safe in these current times. Um, hopefully we can give you a bit of a break for say 40 odd minutes and, and talk some basketball and teach you some things. Um, tonight's session will be about uh, what we call emotion offense or, or moving um, when your team has the ball. Uh, tonight's session will be done by uh, Drew Petrie and I'll hand over to him now. Thanks mate. Um... The idea for this one for me, so basically I'm just going to go through uh, what a five out offense looks like, um, what the benefits are of it, how I like to run it, and then just a couple of little progressions into it um, that I think work really well with um, kids basketball. So when I say kids basketball, I'm talking under 12s, under 14s, uh, that sort of stuff. So um, I'll start sharing my screen. Um, I think I want to share that one, but you should be able to see the presentation now, I think. I hope. Now, I got your emails up, Drew. My emails up. Okay, so let's start again. Uh, where are you? Where's my scratch up there? That's why. Uh, so stop that. Uh, this one. Let's share that one. That one's better. Now yeah, we got you. Yeah, it should be good. So basically, um, five out, motion offense. I've got a picture here of what it is. I'm not going to go through that just now. Um, I'm going to show you that video uh, in a minute. But basically, um, what is a five out motion? So basically, as you can see in that picture, we've got five players all on the court, all playing and starting outside the three point line. Um, so what this does, it's all about spacing. Um, I'll move on to the next page. So why the five out motion offense? I think the most important thing here is that it teaches kids how to play basketball. So this offense allows players to develop their game because it forces them to learn how to read the defense and their teammates and make decisions based off what they're seeing unfold. Last week, or my last presentation, I don't think it was last week, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, I showed some stuff about uh, small-sided games. And the first drill was around um, closeouts. So shooting and with closeouts. So that's exactly what this is talking about. How one, how to create a great offense to be able to create closeouts out of. And then it teaches kids how to play and create out of attacking closeouts. Uh, it's also positionless. So the five men can play the one man, the one can play the five and any other mix. So any player can play any position. It makes it easier to learn as there's not five different roles being played out on the court. Um, this also leads to better play development as you could have had anyone start on the offense by bringing the ball up the court. So. Great for domestic teams, great for teams that have even skilled players, even great for those teams that don't, as it gives those kids that aren't as skilled a great opportunity to be able to develop their skills in the game setting. Uh, I really like it because it means I can turn around and say to my five man, right, your turn, you dribble the ball up, you go. And no one has to change, no one has to do anything differently other than start in a different spot. It promotes strong fundamentals. So cutting, screening, passing, and shooting are the fundamentals that players will learn just by playing this offense. The better your players are at these fundamentals, the better this offense will work. Um, just by implementing this at practice, you will develop these fundamentals. So by practicing this five on five or three on three, this offense, it's basically pass, cut, and replace. Just by practicing that, we will work on those strong fundamentals of cutting, screening, passing, and shooting. It spaces the court. So with all five players around the perimeter, your team should have great spacing at all times. If players are in the right spots, then the driving lanes are open and it makes it difficult for any help defense. So that's exactly what we're looking for. We're getting away from standing in zones, we're dragging the defense out so that the middle of the key is hopefully open. With quite a bit of movement, with all players moving, it keeps defense out. Um, for those that are playing sort of upper, higher level with recorded games, 
it's difficult to scout. So the offense can be difficult to figure out for defenses because it's a true read and react offense, which makes it hard to scout and defend. So what that means is sometimes the coach might not even know what the kids are about to do. Are they going to drive? Are they going to pass? Are they going to cut? Are they going to hand off? We don't know what the kids are going to do. They're going to do the best decision based on what they see out on the floor. And then the last point there is it's a real team effort. So this is a team offense. You can't rely on any one player to carry the team. Everyone's involved in the passing, cutting and screening to make this offense run efficiently, leading to better player development as everyone's involved, not just one player dribbling and scoring. And we see that a lot from a domestic perspective where we have one uh, gun player dribbling the ball up, shooting all the time. So this offense is designed to create and develop all the players on your team. So give all equal opportunity at scoring, equal opportunity at rebounding, equal opportunity at cutting, screening, passing, all those sorts of stuff. Before um, we get into showing you the five out motion offense, there are five rules. So it's governed by five rules, or I like five rules that I like to use um, when I run it. So basically, first one, if you're being denied, and the player with the ball looks at you, back cut immediately and so never hesitate. That's, um, that's a no-brainer. So if you're one pass away from the ball, and I'll show you the video shortly, you'll understand. If you're one pass away from the ball and your player is up, so you, we can't pass it, we back cut immediately. If you believe you can attack the basket and score on your defender, do it. So we really want to encourage that one-on-one, -on -one, beat my man, attack, get the split, penetrate the key, and if the defense sags, then we can pass it out. Uh, players must square up to the basket when they have the ball. This is a big one. So we really want catch, square up to the basket so that we're not telegraphing what we're going to be doing by spacing us in a certain direction. And then most importantly, by squaring up to the basket, players can shoot, pass or dribble. So we want all those three options available each and every time we make a pass. Um, every action must be performed with a purpose. If you cut, cut hard, and then never pass and stand still. Excuse me. And then spacing is always on the three-point line. So it makes it difficult for the defense to help. So we want to be out, spaced out, everybody outside. So now I'm just going to quickly stop my stop share. I just want to share another screen, which is this one. Okay, so you should be able to see my video there now, hopefully. If I press, if I press play, you'll be able to see this offense in motion and you'll see all five players moving. And basically it's as simple as pass, cut to the basket and then replace the spot. And we'll go through the passes in a second, but this is the motion in, the five out motion in flow. It should be nice and slow for you to be able to see as well. So number five there, he passes, cuts to the basket. First player fills the spot. Second player fills the spot. And every time we pass, we make a cut. So you can see in this, we actually have five players all moving in unison all at the same time making it really, really hard for the defenders to be able to clog up the key and um, play like a zone defense. They've got to keep moving with their, they've got to keep moving with their man all the time, creating lots and lots of opportunities to score at the basket. You can see each time one person cuts or even on the, um, even on when we're filling the spot, these guys are V cutting or L cutting to get open. So this guy at the top, V-cut out to the top. Go on the side, V-cut out to the side. Cool. Now we're back to this one. Cool. So what did we just see? Let's, um, let's slow it down a bit. So basically um, setting it up. So there are five spots that must always be filled unless the player is performing an action like screening or cutting. For the purpose of this exercise, I'm not going to talk about screening at all. I think that's something 
for a little bit higher up and for a bit more advanced from a domestic perspective, I believe we shouldn't really be looking at screening just yet, especially for the younger kids. For the older kids, yes, absolutely. Get in some screening roles, but for the younger kids, which I think looking at their participants here, I think we're talking about younger kids. So we'll take out screening for this. But the five spots are the left corner, the left wing, position at the top, and then the right wing in the right corner. These spots are all outside the three point line. Uh, Fast. When teaching the five out um, offense to your team for the first time, I highly recommend you use cones. So get cones out on the court and put the positions on the floor. They don't need to stay there for long, and I really don't want them to stay there for long, but really get them out there so that the kids know what those positions are. So that's basically setting them up. One, two, three, four, five. Right, next, how to run it. So basically there's three progressions that I gradually introduce one by one. The first one is the basic cutting. The second one is what we call a dribble at. And then the third one is what we call a dribble handoff. So it's important to make sure you start with progression one and move through the progressions without skipping any steps. So this allows your players to gradually learn the concepts without being overwhelmed with the entire offense all at once. So basically, if you don't know the basic cutting, <coughs> the dribble at action is not gonna work. And if you don't know how to do the dribble at action, then the dribble handoff action is not going to work. So you've got to do it one by one and introduce them nice and slow and only move on to the next one once the kids understand it. Um, now it's time to learn the cuts. So basically the first one, progression one, basic cutting. Uh, so there are four passes that can be made during progression one. So part of the basic cutting and these are as follows. So the first one is the top to the wing pass. Uh, so you can see here, the one man has passed to the two. The one man cuts through, three man V cuts or L cuts to replace, and then the five man V cuts or L cuts to replace the three man. Basically what we saw in that first motion on the video. So on a top wing pass, the passer basket cuts all the way through the key and fills the opposite corner, and then three and five fill. That's our first option. A second pass is our wing pass to corner pass. So here you can see two has the ball and he passes it to the corner, which is four. So after every pass we cut through. So the two will cut through, three will then replace, five will replace, one will replace, and then we're back, as you can see here in a five out situation. Um, that's all that says there. And then our next pass is our corner to wing pass. So when the corner passes it back out, from the corner, so four to three in this case, four will cut and cut back. There's no spot to replace, there's no movement happening. So he cuts to the basket and then cuts back out. And then we end up with the ball here at the three. Important to note with my five rules at this time, if at any stage we cannot make a pass because we're being overplayed or denied the ball, that player must back cut. A very important part of teaching this offense is to back cut if you cannot catch the ball because of your defender. And then the other thing is, if at any stage your defender is playing right up on you and you can blow by them, we encourage kids to do that. So we're encouraging a bit of freedom with what the kids are doing, a bit of creativity. We're now learning how to play basketball. Can I back cut? Can I catch? Who can I set up? Man cutting, can I pass it to him? Can I take my man on? All making decisions. Um, on the go during the game as we would. The last one, the wing to the top. So if we're passing back from the wing to the top here, it's three to five. Three men will cut. So because we've passed back to the right-hand side, the two or the one man aren't moving at the moment. So one will, three will cut through and then cut back to the same side and four will replace. And we end up like this. Some teaching points to remember when teaching progressing one. Mind your player that if you're being overplayed, they must back cut exactly what I just said. Um, to set the defender, get open and get open on a front cut. So we want to cut past the front of the defender. After passing, the player should take one step away from the ball and then explode to the ball side of their defender and cut to the basket looking for the basketball. If the defender jumps to the basketball, so taking away the front cut, um, the passer should back cut and try to step in front of the defender to open up the passing lane. So basically, as quick as you can, get to the rim and get in front of your player. Always watch the basketball on cuts. 
you know, it sort of goes without saying, but I don't know how many times you see kids, you tell them to cut and they look at the ring and someone passes to them and it hits them in the back of the head. Uh, happens a lot. So we've got to remind them to always watch the basketball when we cut. If the shot is put up, they need to know immediately to establish rebounding position. And then most importantly, cut hard on all cuts to the rim. Doing so will make the cutter a threat to score, which will force weak side defence to help. So that's exactly what we're talking about. We want to get the ball into the key. We want to, if the, if the defence helps, pass the ball out. And then we're creating those long or short closeouts that we spoke about a couple of weeks ago, where we can get now players reading those closeouts, which they fake and drive, or if they get an open shot. Uh, progression two, which is the dribble at action. So we now have our basic motion with our players going round or cutting through in our five out action. We now add a, a, um, a second, what we call a second action. So this action can be used when the player with the basketball is being heavily pressured and the only option to pass are being denied well by the off ball defenders. So in this case, we've got um, the ball here with number one and defenders are up on two and they're up on three. So we have no one person pass away to make it because the defenders are in the way. So in this scenario, the player with the ball decides to dribble towards one of those players. Here you can see the squiggly line, that means dribble. Dribble towards a player at another spot. Now when this happens, the player who has the ball being dribbled towards them must back cut. So if the ball gets dribbled towards you, you cut through. You go back cut to the basket. And then the dribbler will take his spot and the cutter cuts through. I must have had a few reds when I, read, when I wrote this, but um, the dribbler takes his spot and the cutter cuts through like he just passed the ball. So like we had before, the cutter, cut, the cutter cuts through. He ends up in the other's corner and three and five replace. So if the player without the basketball is being denied, they can make a hard back cut looking to receive the basketball for a layup. If they don't receive the pass, they fill the weak side corner the other players rotate towards the basketball and the next action begins. So basically that's the dribble out in a nutshell. So now we've got players that can either choose to pass and cut themselves, or they can choose to dribble out another player to send them back door for that open. Once they get to this spot, so once the ball is here, in this spot here with the one man, we can choose to start again. So we can make a pass either way. So we have a rule if we pass there, we also have a rule if we pass here, or if they're being overplayed, we can dribble back at them if we haven't stopped our dribble, so if we keep our dribble alive. Okay, so that's basically the dribble at progression. The third one I like to add, um, which I sort of, I, I've been hinting about over the last few times that I've presented, is this action called the dribble handoff. I, I think it's really good for, for kids to be doing the dribble handoff. It's basically, it's basically a pick and roll. It's basically a screen and roll, but without setting a screen. And so because you are doing a handoff and the person setting the screen actually has the ball, any contact they make is not seen as a screen. So the referee doesn't call it as a bad screen or he's not going to call you know, a moving screen or anything like that because the player actually has the ball. So we can make as much contact as we like with the defender because, well, we've got the ball. So an easy way to sort of get them learning how to take out other players uh, from a screening perspective without actually setting a screen. So the dribble handoff. The next option, uh, this is similar to a pick and roll and the other three players on the court should hold their position and wait. So all, all I'm talking about there is basically um, while this action happens, the other three players sit back and wait. And then the player that receives the handoff should attack the rim and kick out to shooters if the defense slides over to help. So basically all you can see here is we've first got our dribble at action so one dribbles at three. So if we dribble at, what's our rule? Three man goes baseline, two man fills, four man fills, three man fills. And now our dribble action action happens with the one and the five man. So the one would keep dribbling. And then in this picture here, we see the five man come around. We hand off the ball and the five man attacks the ring with two, four and three in really good positions to be able to catch and shoot should their defender help forcing long closeouts that we can attack. Um, yeah, that we can attack based on what we're seeing, based on what we're reading from, a, from an offensive player perspective. So when performing 
bit of a teaching tip here when performing handoffs the player with the basketball should rotate their hands so that they're on the top and the bottom of the basketball this allows for the receiving player to the person receiving the handoff grabs the ball and can go through can go through with it um so that's that's the first way of performing the dribble handoff um i don't mind this way it, it sort of opens up quite a bit of you can see this gap between one and two we have quite a bit bigger gap than what the normal spacing does so it creates a bit of a bigger area for the five man to be able to penetrate at the end of the day that's basically all we want to try and get from an offensive perspective is we want to create the split which is a player getting an advantage and Lockie spoke about that last week about players getting an advantage creating that and then attacking the rim with a numbers advantage and then being able to make decisions off it if you're open shoot it if you're not pass it off you can go there's one other way that I like to do the dribble handoff and that's coming out of the corner. So we've run our, we've run all of our five out actions and the ball has got to the five man in the corner. So instead of him passing the ball out of the corner where he only has one option, I like it for him to dribble out of the corner. So he dribbles out of the corner, the three man goes through, the one man comes over for the dribble handoff, two man replaces, four man replaces, and the one man goes around for that dribble handoff with this whole quarter of the court open. So it opens up real court, that real quarter of the court for the one man to go and attack. Five men can roll behind and drag down behind. And then we've still got our two, four and our three in a good position for catch and shoot or catch and re-penetrate or um, uh, kick the kick out pass and the extra, the extra pass on that one. So basically I've just said exactly what all that is. Um, I'm going to I'm going to stop share, and so after going through all of that, I'm now going to show that video once more, just to have another look at it after going through it. Share it. Pass, cut, replace. Pass, cut, replace. This is the cut here. So this guy in the corner, he's passed it out of the corner. He will just go in and come back out as per the rules. And then replace, replace the spots that are empty. Um, what else do I need to so share? And then the last thing I've got, basically I've got all this information from these two websites. So uh, really good websites for this five out motion offense. Um, they won't have the dribble handoff. They do it a little bit differently. They do it with the guy that's next in line. So um, if I can show you, they do it where they do a dribble handoff if the one man dribbles towards the three, then the three man takes the handoff instead of the five man into the corner. The only reason I've changed it is one, to move the defense a bit more, and three, it creates a little bit more spacing to be able to attack. That's why I've changed it. Um, but they're the two websites there. Other than that, if there's any questions, um, nice short and sharp session today. Um, try and keep it short, but that's, I recommend teaching that to any under 12s, 14s, 16s. Uh, even the older kids um, will get something out of running that sort of offense, uh, basically. Um, so, Lockie, back to you, mate. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. 
Thanks, Drew. Another good presentation. Um, we monitor the chat. There's been no no real questions coming through. Um, the only thing I'd just ask is um, just the definition of what uh, what you say a back cut is. Um, so what you know what for those who might not know what does what is a back cut? How would you define that and when do you use it? Right. So that's very good. Um, I can show you this. Um, where have I got it open? Just one second, because I've got something up that will explain that good. If I can't find it. If I change, this, can you see that basketball court? No, you can see your um, presentation. presentation. Oh, why won't it come up? I'll get there. Bear with me. Three, two. Let's uh, let's try this. Is that better? Can you see that basketball court? Yeah, we can see that now. Right. Cool. Okay. So let's add a defender. Okay. So what I'm talking about with a back cut or a front cut. So we've got two defenders here. As you can see, this guy has the ball. As per my offense, I tell him to pass the ball here. Most times, the defense here will just sag back. So what we want to do is take the guy away, one step away, and we want to cut past the front of the defender. So that would be a front cut where we pass through the front of that defender. That's a front cut, that one. When new sort of style of defense at the moment is when we ask the defenders to jump to the ball so when the ball gets passed we want them to jump to the ball so jump to that side so if the defender does this then we want him to pass we want the cutter to cut back side of the cutter and try and get in front of them so that now we've got the option for this pass here so basically that's the difference between a front cut and a back cut means we're either going ball side on a front cut or we're going not the opposite side behind the defender on that side. The other, the other way that I used it in this instance was I said that we couldn't make this pass because the defender was up. So because the defender's there, I can't make that pass. It's going to get cut off. So if we dribble towards if we dribble towards with the ball we want this guy to cut behind that defender cut to the ring and look for that pass there so that's basically what i'm talking about with a front cut back cut and then again on that back cut towards the basket hopefully that helps clear up any confusion yeah thanks Drew. Yeah, that's a, a good way to describe it and um with the visuals as well really good um, if there's nothing else further, then we can um, end it there. Uh, everyone can enjoy their night and uh, go do what they need to do. One of these weeks, Francisco, we'll get something out of you. <laughs> uh, next week, we have something special planned for you. It won't be um, it'll be a different voice. So it won't be me or Drew, um, which would be good. We'll, we'll get to sit back and watch, but we'll have our senior women's coach, uh, Ben Carroll. He'll, he'll do a presentation and he'll do something um, based around building uh, your coaching philosophy and building values uh, into, into your sessions. Um, so I'll send some information about that tomorrow to your emails and I'll also um, put something on, on our Facebook and our website as well, you know, for all information on that. I'll um, um, present that to you, mate. Yeah. So thanks, guys, for joining me. Um, have a great night and I'll see you all next week. Thanks.